This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Page 107, Professional Practice and Codes of Ethics. Corporate Ethics, the topic relates to the attitude and behaviour of a company and its application of ethical values. We came across the Corporate and Social Responsibility Report, and it's within that that we'd expect to find disclosure of the company's ethical attitude. Disclosure extends beyond legal requirements. Past exam question, how could this report be improved? How could the environmental report be improved? Or the Corporate Social Responsibility Report. So it extends beyond legal requirements. Oh, who was it that was reviewing the financial statements to see if there was a better way of presenting the information? Who was it? I thought that was Clarissa. I thought that was... I thought... Is it, it was the only committee? Oh, it was the R, wasn't it? It was the R in, in Clarissa, of course it was. So disclosure extends beyond legal requirements. And in this respect, it should be viewed as discretionary, Past exam question. Should companies be obliged to make a corporate social responsibility report? Entities should have developed policies in a number of areas in an effort to ensure continued survival. The areas include purpose of the business, workforce, customer relations, shells and other providers, suppliers, society and implementation. And we're going to extra detail on all of those on the next few pages, page 118. And again, I'm not sure that I want to stand here and read these out to you. Purpose of the business, can you do that one? Just the general matters that you might expect to find in this report. And then the workforce. Should be disclosure on the, the company policy with reference to working conditions, recruitment, training, development, rewards and bonuses. Health and safety and security. Equal opportunities, retirement, redundancy, discrimination. And the use of entity assets by employees. There ought to be something within the report covering any or all of those in order better to acquaint the stakeholders, people who are interested in reading about our company, in order better to acquaint them as to what is our ethical code of practice within the company. Customer relations, how can the company maintain... Can you think of any, anything else you might want in the workforce? Can you think of anything? I think they're all, and I hesitate to say, but I think they're all common sense. But the trouble with common sense things, the trouble with common sense things is until they're actually pointed out, it's actually difficult yourself to think about them, I find. Customer relations, how can the entity maintain the quality of its product or service and in that way keep its customers loyal? There should be something within this report, there should be something within the, the corporate ethics code. How the entity should arrive at a fair price for its products so that we do make a profit. There's nothing wrong in making a profit, it's accepted that people should make a profit. What is wrong is Outrageous profits, unethical profits, unfair profits, that's what's wrong. Make a profit, but the customer should pay a reasonable price. You shouldn't be overcharging for the service that you give. And how can the entity improve its after-sales service is another matter to consider and another matter to be included in a report. And then the last four, the shareholders and other providers, the suppliers, the society and the implementation of this. Again, I'm going to ask you to read page 119. The Society Accepting that you're a member of society, identify within your corporate social report, identify what it is you do for society. Not just the planet, but closer to home. The sponsorship of students to travel overseas and get overseas education. The sponsorship of the local junior football team. 
the sponsorship of of people running the marathons and how many employees were in your team that, that completed the marathon. This telling the stakeholders that you're a good corporate citizen, moving um, plants and animals from a, an area of wetland because you want to develop that wetland, you want to extend your factory. But the local population has said this is not right because there are some very rare frogs that live in this area of wetland. So the company has taken these frogs, they've caught them in buckets and they've taken them to another area of wetland and, and released these frogs somewhere else. And a lot of silly little things like that, that the, the company has helped to protect these rare amphibians. And then implementation down at the bottom of page 119, which moves us on to 120, professional ethics. Most professions have their own rules, you know the ACCA does. The main purpose is to ensure that members and students maintain proper acceptable professional standards of care. Well, that's all right setting out the rules, but you know what I said earlier, I said yesterday. If you have a set of rules, what's the natural reaction? To break them, yeah, to breach them. So, ethics are therefore a guide. They're not, raw, they're not rules, they're a guide. Act with courtesy and consideration. Act professionally, act consistently, act competently. Uh, be independent and objective. These are, these are the, the major ethical rules. Confidentiality. These are the major ethical rules which affect the accountants of profession. But there are people that break them. And if they're caught, if they're caught then they face disciplinary action. There are even students who cheat in exams. But if and when, because they are, so far as I'm aware, they are caught, um, that's it. That's the end of their career as an accountant. Because if you can't trust an accountant, who can you trust? If you're a student, as you are, and you're sitting in that exam room in six weeks' time, is it only six weeks? Good heavens. You're sitting in that exam room in six weeks' time. It's less than that. <gasps> what day is your exam? What date is your exam? 15th? 14? 13. 13. Oh, it's six weeks. Just over six weeks. Oh, plenty of time, haven't you? Plenty. Um, if you're sitting in that exam room and, and you see your neighbour cheating, what do you do? Nothing. Nothing. Hmm? Whistleblow. Yeah. Whistleblow. Would you do that yourself? Yeah. What's it doing to the society? I, I say it again. If you can't trust an accountant, who can you trust? And if you don't blow the whistle and you allow this person next to you to carry on cheating and pass their exam and they become a qualified accountant, you know, and they themselves know, that they are a, a proven cheat. And, and you're allowing to operate as an accountant somebody who you know is going to let down the profession. Yep, you've got to whistleblow. It happened here, didn't it, within the last 12 months? I believe a student here was... Uh, uh, found cheating. Not from the courses, it was a um, self-study person. What? Yeah. Do yeah. they cheat in the UK as well? Oh, of course it happens in the UK. There are bad apples in every barrel. <laughs> yeah, of course it happens in the UK. Yeah, we had one when I worked at financial training. One of, uh, one of our students was found cheating in the exam. And he didn't go home that evening. He, his exam paper was taken from him and he didn't go home. And his parents were ringing up frantic, wondering where he was. Um, and he turned up the morning after with the local priest, the local um, religious leader, uh, and he decided he was going to join the church. He was going to become a, a priest. <laughs> so I suppose the obvious extension to this comment is he, he was a cheating person therefore not fit to be an accountant, but he was perfectly acceptable to be a priest. Well, there you go. No further comment. 
professional ethics. The main purpose of ethics guides is to ensure that members and students of the professions maintain proper acceptable professional standards. There has to be within each profession a me mechanism for administering, monitoring and punishing, particularly punishing any member who breaks this code of ethics. That way we maintain credibility. What's another word for credibility? You can do it. Yes, you can. Not some of the word for credibility. Probity. Yeah, probity. And the profession can be seen to be acting in the public interest. And that, by acting in the public interest, you're then actually going to emphasize and, and improve the public's image of the profession. If they can see that you are honest enough and self-regulatory enough, if the profession is self-regulatory enough to catch and punish members of the club who breach the club's rules, then the public should be comforted. The public should find great comfort in the fact that accountants will punish accountants for breaking accountants' rules. In any code of ethics of a profession there will normally be an introduction, fundamental principles, a conceptual framework and then detailed application in any profession. Doctors, lawyers, accountants, solicitors, um, architects, any profession. They will have these own rules, the introduction, the principles, the conceptual framework and then the detail. In ours, in the ACCA's code on page 121, we've got these integrity, objectivity, competence, confidentiality and behaviour. Integrity, fair dealing and honesty. Members should not become involved with any reports or communication where information is either wrong, known to be wrong, provided recklessly or carelessly, or incomplete in such a way that it's misleading. I can tell you the truth, but if I don't tell you the whole truth, then what's the point of me telling you? And I gave you the example yesterday, which I'm not prepared to repeat. Objectivity, the accountants should ensure that their professional judgment is not impaired by reason of any bias or conflict of interest. Competence, don't accept work which lies beyond your professional competence. If you can't do it, don't accept the work. If you don't have those competences, don't take the job on unless you're prepared to buy in those competences. Once an accountant, a fourth bullet point there, once an accountant has satisfactorily passed all the professional exams, there, that's acquired competence, it's then necessary to ensure that they, these competences are maintained. And that's the requirement of CPD, continual professional development. The 40 hours a year that you're going to have to do continuing to develop your professionalism and your competences. That's why any accountant that you've ever met is competent in all areas of accountancy. So, for instance, if I were to fall ill, then John could step in on Monday and teach advanced corporate reporting. And then do Thursday, Friday, he could teach advanced audit and assurance. Uh, probably not, actually. But equally, I couldn't step in and teach financial management and performance management and, and swaps and... and things that John teaches. That's why Yvonne couldn't and Ken couldn't. That's why we have our own specialisms and specialisations. But we do, we, do we do CPD hours? Do you think we do CPD hours? Continue professional development hours? Do you think we do or not? Or do you think we're all a bit old now to worry about CPD? Do. You, I know we should do, but do you think we do do? Yes, I'm fully aware. Hmm? Yes, I'm aware. 
players that you do it. Of course we do. Who do you think writes the notes? Who do you think updates the notes? Who do you think changes the tax notes? Every time, every year that there's a new piece of tax legislation, every single question has got to be rewritten, rewritten and re uh, recalculated, reworked out. Of course we do 40 hours a year. Uh, preparation time. Just prepare. Who wrote these notes? Of course we do the CPD hours. Confidentiality, information obtained in business relationship, shall not be disclosed outside the firm, unless there's proper or specific authority to do so, or a professional right to do so. For instance, it may be in the public interest that you should make that disclosure. But I've also given you others. I told you earlier today that if you suspect your client, if you know that your client is guilty of gaining benefit from drug dealing, money laundering, insider dealing, you should blow the whistle. I don't know anyone that's ever done it. Oh, I do actually. I do. I know a, a small accountant, a single sole practitioner, who has blown the whistle on his clients uh, on the basis that she told him that she had not declared to him all her income, uh, thinking that he would not tell it to anybody else. But he has to tell. If you are told or you find out or you know that your client is avoiding tax, evading taxes by under-declaring income or over-declaring expenditure, uh, then you have to tell. Otherwise, you yourself are guilty of a criminal offence. Alright, so that will do, I think, for confidentiality. Page 123, Ethical Considerations. The accountant needs to consider the extent to which disclosure will adversely affect the interests of third parties. The extent of disclosure will be affected by any uncertainties, and the more uncertain, the less disclosure. It should ensure that disclosure is made only to authorised people. Behaviour. Comply with relevant law and legislation. Don't get involved in activities which will bring discredit to the profession. A partner of a big four firm cheating by not paying his railway fare correctly, by travelling from rather, or saying that he travelled from rather closer to London than he had done, and paying only a fraction of the correct fare, and he was found out. What's your name? Where do you work? Big four firm. Big four? You're an accountant? And you're cheating the railway company? Ooh. If you can't trust an accountant, who can you trust? Bringing the profession into disrepute. We should treat all people with whom we come into professional contact with courtesy. What's courtesy? How can you let me say these words and not ask? What's courtesy? Being careful. Careful. Dreadful? No, careful. 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 No, it's not careful. It's, it's like... It's polite. Politely. So when I stand downstairs and, and open the door because some, some woman is coming through and I open the door because that's what, that's what men traditionally do, although you feminists out there may feel that because you're of equal status and loving and caring that, that you should be able to open your own door. <clears throat> but when I stand and open the door, I find that people out here just walk through as though they expect it, as though it's my job to open the door. They don't, they don't actually turn around and say thank you or whatever the word for thank you is in your language. They don't say thank you. Can you believe that? What happened to courtesy and consideration? What happened to, to just mere basic fundamental human politeness? What happened? All right, don't answer. I should not indulge in any marketing activity which would bring this uh, profession into disrepute. And then the ethical threats. Marketing activity, this is advertising, this, this last one on professional behaviour. That's advertising. When advertising was re, re, not released, relaxed, 
when the advertising rules were relaxed <coughs> because when I was at your stage advertising was not allowed at all you couldn't advertise that you were a firm of accountants or auditors and when the relaxation came through one of the first adverts I saw was from Two Shross and they had an advertisement on television and the image was of a man who had only a, a very skimpy little pair of shorts on swinging through the trees, swinging through the jungle uh, and they, the caption said don't get lost in the jungle get in touch with Touche it was a Touche Ross advert don't get lost in the jungle get in touch with Touche and apparently the accountancy profession thought that that was bringing discredit on the basis that people seeing that advert presumably then thought all accountants dress only in a pair of short swimming trunks and swing through the jungle and it was madness I mean can you see anything bringing discredit to the firm of a, of a man with not many clothes on swinging through the jungle can you see anything discrediting to the firm, to the profession? I don't think so, but anyway. But another famous advert, very famous advert, I will adapt it to fit the situation. Very famous advert said, it's easy to sleep with a certified accountant. It's easy to sleep with a certified, it means that your certified accountant will be advising you about how to act honestly and ethically and morally and will be helping you to disclose the correct amount of your revenue and your profits and therefore pay the correct amount of tax and it means you don't have to worry about some anonymous knock on your door at three o'clock in the morning and it's the state revenue service come to investigate your records. It's much easier to sleep if you have a certified accountant behind you or with you or next to you, whichever is the, uh, the appropriate expression. Ethical threats are connected with conflicts. In the context of professional ethics, the guide identifies within the frame of problems associated with conflicts of interest. But potential for numerous different examples is so great. And you can't spe spell these out. The combination of situations which gives conflicts of interest must be so many that it can only be a guideline. The approach applying generalised principles to particular situations as they arise is, in my view, a preferable way to a rules or legal based approach. Safeguards can be adopted by different interest groups in an attempt to protect the accountant from the threats caused by conflicts of interest. And these interest groups include the profession, the work environment and the individual themselves. And that fills it up a little bit on page 124. Those three ideas, the professional work environment and, and the individual accountant, are filled in here on page 124. Education and training, including CPD, corporate governance regulations and professional standards, and the monitoring of the quality of professional work, the granting of audit registration certificates, and applying disciplinary proceedings when appropriate. The profession will help to protect the individual from the threats. The work environment, internal control systems, review procedures, disciplinary procedures, your own code of ethics within the firm, even your colleagues, even your colleagues, and, and the concept of working within a team, an audit team, one of the elements of being a member of a team is that you probably try harder than if it was just yourself because you don't want to put, put in a performance which will let down the team. I can imagine that in, a, in a, a game of cricket, for instance, I can imagine that the batsman who gets out and scores no runs and then the team loses, I can imagine that individual batsman feeling really very, very, very emotional and upset because he's let down the team. Everybody else has tried the hardest and done adequately well, but you scored nothing. So, being a member of an audit team, I can see that you would not want to let down your firm. And it's um, one of the, I think, I may be wrong here, but I think I'm right, one of the, the things that the big four firms certainly, and probably others as well, do is to develop the team spirit. And that people like, for instance, Price Waterhouse, will go away for effectively for bonding weekends. <clears throat> I have a feeling that 
Price Waterhouse here in, in this country. <coughs> Went away for such a weekend about three weekends ago, where they disappear on a Thursday night or a Friday morning and spend the weekend bonding together. <coughs> Building rafts and climbing mountains and abseiling down cliff walls and going on courses. The individual compliance with professional standards. Maintaining records of contentious issues. Protecting yourself in that way. Mentoring. Talking with others within the firm. Talking to an appointed representative of the firm and asking advice. <coughs> and contacting the ACCA with professional queries. Examples of threats and safeguards. I'm not going through that. So 125, 126, 127. I think they're reasonably well documented. <coughs>